Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a caustics cheat where we're going to be mixing together both LuxCore and Cycles to create a composite image that looks really cool. This works with animations as you saw in my more recent video that was released and it works on single images as well. So before we begin, just make sure that you have LuxCore installed. I have a whole bunch of videos on LuxCore and how to install it. Make sure you have the most recent version or you can just grab the project file that I have on my Gumroad which has the version that I used included. Now, before we actually begin, I just want to show you what the end results are going to be as far as the layers we're going to be creating. So you'll see here that it's like a black screen, but we have this effect right here. This is basically a VFX layer, a light pass layer that we're going to be putting over the top. There's an alpha channel applied to this. Then this is the render out of Blender. So you can see here that it looks really neat, at least in my opinion. And we have this cool little leather thing here for the background. And it looks really nice if you want to know how to make this. I have a whole series on how to make this ring, so check that out if you haven't yet. And then the comp is right here, so you can see that there was a color pass done, and we have the layers put on here to make it look that much better as far as your final render with, of course, a glow put over the top because it's not a Blender CGI pass without a glow effect put over the top of your render. So let's just jump into Blender here and take a look. And we're going to start off with LuxCore, and I'm just going to tell you some overall things to do. I'm not going to tell you all the details with Lux or anything like that. I have a whole bunch of videos on that. I'm just going to tell you about some general things on this particular workflow. So we're going to only be using the CPU to do the render. You're going to be using the OID and denoiser when we do this. And you need to make sure that you go over to your layers and you turn on the caustics checkbox right here. And this is going to allow us to separate out the caustics pass from everything else. So yeah, I'm going to go over these uh, render details first, just so that we have that in mind. I'm sure that's what a lot of people really, really want. So make sure you have that denoiser on, make sure you put on a halt conditions, especially if you're doing animations, this helps you from having the engine just keep rendering that single frame over and over. So make sure you put the halt conditions on here. And then in the cache area, you can turn on the photon uh, and caustics like caching and everything else here to kind of help you out if you really want to use that. For samples, I'm going to be using the random sampler and the cache friendly pattern because this actually works a little bit faster. And then if we go down here, sorry, in here to the light paths and you go here, turn on the light tracing and make that 100%. Then for the bounces here, I put the total path depth to 32, but the specular is where I put the 32. And for diffuse and glossy, I only put it at one because since we're really just using this for the caustics pass, the other stuff really doesn't matter. But for specular, we kind of want there to be more offshoots from this glass piece here. And that's usually what people are using the caustics renderer inside of LuxCore for. Now, one thing that's really, really awesome about LuxCore is it separates out the LuxCore materials from the Cycles materials. And you can see when we select this right here, this drop down, we can see that there's the LuxCore and the Cycles material, which means you can basically hop between the two different render engines, Cycles and LuxCore, without having to redo all of your materials because it will basically save that material information in the project file so that when you hop between LuxCore and Cycles, it will automatically change between the two. So if I go into the LuxCore materials here, you can see that I added this right here, which is a leather texture. And if I turn on the viewport render here and I zoom in, you're going to see that it's going to render out this down here. So I put the texture on my background in the LuxCore version because I wanted to have that little extra detail. You don't have to do this. In fact, most of the time, what I have been doing in my practicing or uh, checking for how to make this a really, really fast process is I've been creating a sort of like a null material, a matte material like this right here. So anything that I just want the caustics to play on, I will just make it a matte material like this. And that way the caustics show up and you can actually change this to be you know, a little bit brighter, a little bit darker. And you can apply this material to all of the things in your scene. Just be careful that you don't make this exactly 100% black because then you lose your caustics material here. So you need to make this a little bit more gray. And it really doesn't matter that much because what ends up happening is we're only going to get this caustics pass anyway. So for all of the objects in your scene, and you'll see right here, I'm going to put the animation that I did. And this animation, this project file is provided in that download for the project file download. Basically what you're seeing is that I put a matte material on everything else except for the jewel in the center. 
and then the caustics play on everything else so that when I move over to the cycles engine and I composite over the top, you can see that the cycles render has all of those materials applied, but the caustics pass is playing over the top of those and it looks really nice. So I'm just gonna change this back to my other material here. And what I did also is that I'm keeping all of the lighting the same between cycles and Luxcore. And when you click on the lighting, depending on what kind of lighting you are using, if you're using primitives or something like that, you know, just a basic point light or something like that, or an area light, they should be a relatively one-to-one. -one. But if you're using IES textures, you might have to do some different stuff to get that to work. But what I did here is I added this extra light. You can see this right here. And if I turn this, you can see I named it Luxcore Light Caustics. If I turn this off, you can see that it kind of loses some of that really cool caustics effect that we get out of Luxcore. So I added this so that we can get that really cool, like casted uh, light, reflected light effect from the bidirectional path tracing that it does so that we can get that really cool look. And then of course you can see the metal material here is reflecting that. And if we click on the actual ring, I basically created just a, a general metal material, which is very easy to do by going over here. You can click in the node tree presets for Luxcore. You can just click on metal and then just assign it like a silver color, or whatever it is that sort of matches the other. But again, like of course, if you have colorful material or something, you can see that it does change the color of that reflected light. But for me, it's just a regular silver material that I had in the original file. So I'm just going to keep it something like that. So some of the things that you want to actually reflect or cast the caustics, you'll need to make sure that you put the correct-ish materials on it. You don't need to do the full, you know, PVR textures, but just enough so that you can actually get that reflected light and it look, you know, relatively the same as your cycle scene. So really quick, before we render this out, I just want to show you what it looks like in the cycles scene here just to show you what I was talking about you can see that now that I switched over to cycles if I click here I don't see the Luxcore materials but if I go to the shader editor right there here is all of my cycles materials and if I look at this in the rendered view you can see that this is the scene however I need to turn off the Luxcore light caustics and turn on this front light here which gives me my more flatly lit scene without that really, really bright point that was just there to reflect all of those really cool caustics. So there is what the rendered image would look like there. So before we do the actual composite section, which I would recommend that you do it in something that is a professional compositing program, like you can use After Effects if you'd like, you can use Premiere, which is more of an editing program. DaVinci Resolve is free. I have some videos on my channel that you can check out. I'll put a card here and there's a link in the video description to help you out if you don't know anything about DaVinci Resolve. But really we're gonna be doing a general, you know, easy process. We're gonna take one layer with an alpha channel and put it over the top of another image. And then we're going to color that. And then if it was an animation or something, you'd add some animated grain or something like that and do all of your post effects after you do the composite. So let's go back over to Luxcore. And we have all of our settings in here. And we're going to make sure that everything is saved up. And I actually forgot to turn on the Luxcore light here and turn off this front one. So let's do that one more time. So let's actually take a look at what was rendered here. So what we can do, and I'll show you how this works inside of the compositor that I have. You can see that we have the image, we have the alpha, we have the denoised and the caustics. So the caustics is really what we're interested in. And if we take a look over here, and I have the Noid Wrangler add-on turned on, so I can just press Control Shift left click to cycle through these. You can see that we have the render here, and it's a little bit speckly. And if we turn off over here with the viewer, we turn off use alpha, it'll just throw some black behind there. And you can see how sort of speckly this really is. So if we go and we look through the denoised, this one right here, and take a look at that one, you can see how much nicer and smoother that is. It's not as uh, speckly, it's not as noisy, and it looks really nice. And for animations, it looks really cool. So then what we wanna do is we need to create an alpha channel because if we look through the alpha channel here, it's just a white one value. White is one when it comes to an alpha channel. So what we need to do is we need to make something that has zeros and ones so that we can actually create a transparency or a cutout of certain areas. So if we take the denoised and we put it through this color ramp here and we take a look through there, you can actually see that we have with the light information, it's a denoised alpha channel created. 
So if we zoom in here, you can see that it's been denoised. So if we take that, run that into a color ramp to create a zero and a one value, you can see you can actually adjust those alpha channel information here, but we don't really wanna do that. Throw that into your alpha input for the output settings for your composite here. And for the viewer, I did the same thing so that we can actually use the alpha. And then now we can basically check and go, okay, I can see that there's a transparency here and that the white, that is where the alpha channel is going to be. Now, in order for us to save this out correctly, what we actually need to do is we need to render this out as an animation, okay? And if we're just doing one image, we need to set our start and end frame for that exact frame that you're going to render out. So make sure you go over to your project settings, set this into the correct place, and this is not the correct naming convention, I'm just kind of running through this very, very fast. So let's render the animation, which is going to save this out into the correct PNG format. So we're going to make sure that our output settings are set correctly. We're going to make sure that our file format is correct, which I'm just gonna use a regular 8-bit PNG. You should have a much higher setting than this, like you know maybe using EXRs or TIFFs and then have a higher color bit depth just so that you can do some adjustments later. But really, I'm just doing a really, really quick example here and I wanna make it as easy as possible. So let's keep these set as that right there and make sure that you have this set to just one frame since we're not doing a full animation here. And one last thing before you actually hit that render button, make sure that you go over here and you make sure to use this right here, use alpha. Okay, make sure that's checked on. Then you'll go up render, render animation and that is going to render out your image. So let's now take a look at the image. So let's reload this here. And if we take a look at the image here, you can see that there's all this crazy stuff going on, okay? And basically what you're seeing is the actual color, the RGB color information here. This is not what the image looks like because there is an alpha channel applied to it, okay? So if we take this alpha channel and plug it into a mix node like this here, and then we take the image here and put it in the bottom, and we take a look at this through there, you can see that now we have, if we look at the viewer node, we have this right here. And this is basically the color information with the alpha channel applied to it so that we see this. And now what we can actually do is we can go over here and we can take this and instead of using the Luxcore render engine, just go over to cycles change the lighting. So I'm gonna turn on the front and I'm gonna turn off the Luxcore light caustics light that I turned on here for the caustics. I'm gonna save this file and we're just gonna render this out. And again, since it's two different render engines, I have different render settings for each one and those get saved because we're using those different render engines. So when you build the stuff out in Luxcore, it's gonna have a specific set of criteria. Then when you open stuff up into cycles and you build it that way, it's gonna have a different set of criteria. So you can see here, we have our image that was rendered out. And if we look through the top up here, it's gonna update and we can look through here and see that now we have this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this image here and we're gonna put it into our mix node and take a look at that. And you can see that now we have the caustic supplied. And what's really cool is you can actually take the color ramp here, if you take the alpha and you put it into a color ramp and then take that and put it into the factor, you can adjust the overall alpha. You can take this slider and move it up to make the caustics effect brighter. You can take the blacks and pull it down to sort of like isolate different sections. Doesn't look super great. Or you can take the white value here, the one value, and we can take this and grade it down so it's not as apparent. So however you want to do that, you can put that together. It's also possible to, instead of using a mix node or an over, it's kind of like called an over composite, where you're mixing something and you're putting it over the other one. So for here, we're taking this image and we're actually putting it over the other image, even though these, like in your brain, it's kind of like... <laughs> opposite of what you see here. Usually in other compositing software, it would be an over operation or something like that, or a merge operation. So if we take this color ramp here and we plug that into there, we can adjust it here, or you can change the mixing here to different things like lighten, or you can change it to overlay, or you can change it to add, which will actually add the value over the top of the other one, which sometimes can result in blown out whites and stuff like that. Or you can screen it over the top, which screen tends to be the one that a lot of people like to use because it takes brighter values, puts it over the top of something like a lens flare or the 
uh, or the add here. That's usually the ways that these sorts of effects are composited, but you can use the alpha channel method here, which in my opinion works just fine, and you can adjust the alpha channel this way. So then all I did was I took that, I put it through this color balance node here, and then I put it through this right here. And then for the composite, we need to actually change some of this up because it's pulling the alpha channel from this up here. So we take the viewer, we put that into the image right here, and we're not going to have an alpha channel for this one. And then when we take a look at the preview here, you can see that it's all good. Very nice. So that's basically how you do that. Just make sure that, in my opinion, what you should be doing is doing your composite later because you can see how messy this can get when you're rendering one thing and then referencing the other. So either use the sequencing uh, compositing method inside of Blender if you like to use Blender for that, but I would recommend that you use a different program like DaVinci Resolve, or if it's a single image, use something like GIMP or Photoshop or something like that, where it's a lot easier for you to control some of these things. So that's basically the method. You're rendering out this caustics layer, and then you are compositing that over the top of your cycles layer, and then doing your color balance, your glare, and I would then add some noise to this to make it look a little bit more like it was uh, uh, you know, photographed on film or something like that, because if it's too clean, it might look fake. So that is, in a nutshell, how you can create some really awesome looking caustics to put over the top of your cycles project for animations or still images. And I really think that you're going to get a lot of usage out of this method and this workflow. Please leave a comment down below and let me know how this worked for you or if you were able to get it done. And if you could connect with me on Twitter and on Instagram and show me what your results are. I would love to see what you guys are working on. Thanks so much to everybody for watching. I appreciate all of you, all of my subscribers, all of my YouTube members, all of my Patreon community. And a huge shout out to Corey Barr for becoming a new associate producer with Student Benefits. It is so awesome to see people still coming in and supporting the channel and making all of these videos possible. If you're interested in becoming a patron, please check out the link down in the video description. As always, thanks so much for watching and I will see you all next time.